today there is 337th day of the series and the keynote speaker for today's session is on dais honorable pitha thomas ma'am so first of all i heartily welcome to you madam i welcome the chief organizer our ideal principal mm betkar sir also welcome faculties of my college and all those dear participants today's topic for presentation is principles of business decisions now this topic as i have mentioned honorable pitha thomas ma'am she is an assistant professor presently serving at the department of commerce and she is from st gits college of applied sciences prathamuttam kottayam kerala so with this brief introduction now i request to you madam please start your presentation on the topic principles of business decisions you are most welcome thank you prashant sir for the warm welcome um at the onset before i start with my topic i would like to uh, place on record my sincere gratitude to vidka sir for the opportunity he has given me to be part of this innovative uh, platform i should say because um to even conceive an idea like this you know a webinar series where people from different fields because i've attended many sessions in the previous days um there are yesterday's was a hindi session right we had english teachers hindi teachers medical professionals physics chemistry and today i'm from the department of commerce so such varied uh, subjects so it's definitely a very enriching platform and i'm really glad and um, uh, in fact pri uh, proud to be a part of this sir thank you sir once again for the opportunity so um, i'll directly move to my topic okay um can i share the screen first one second yes ma'am please Okay, so as um, Prashant sir already told, the topic that I'm going to discuss today is principles of business decisions. Coming to principles of business decisions, uh, first of all, let us discuss. Uh, I think the slide is not moving. I'll just share it once more. it's coming no sir okay so okay um because when i saw it's not i felt it's not moving okay yeah so uh the topic is principles of business decisions so before we come to the principles of business decisions let us take a moment to uh, discuss what is decision itself okay so coming to uh decision like it is a word that all of us hear on a daily basis because every day all of us are taking some kind of decision or the other right um i think um, the moment we say decision uh, at least to me the first thing that comes to my mind is the poem that is written by robert frost the road not taken right in that poem the first two lines of the poem says two roads diverged in an yellow wood and sorry i could not travel both that is uh, at any given point of time there is always two or more than two paths in front of us and we have to decide which path to travel so that is what is decision so it is defined as a choice made between alternative courses of action in a situation of uncertainty right just like the poet said 
two roads are before me and sorry i cannot travel both i have to choose one among the two paths right so this happens to all of us in our day to day lives it's not in just business life or it is not in um, just the lives of business persons right from the moment we wake up in the morning should i go for the job today or should i take a leave right what should i make in the morning i have atta should i make chapati or should i make bu puri right so every day every moment all of us are taking a lot of decisions so decision is defined as a choice made between alternative courses of action in a situation of uncertainty it is a course of behavior about what must or what must not be done in a given situation okay so um, as i told you it is a choice and this choice this will um, decide between success and failure whether a person gets success or whether a person gets failure is decided by the decision that one makes so um decision making apart from decision there is something known as decision making so decision making is the process of choosing a particular course of action from among the various alternatives to accomplish the predetermined objectives so it is a process that involves selecting the best course of action from several alternative courses of action so decision making uh, is a process of decision we said is the choice so decision making is the process of making the choice so okay so the process of choosing a particular course of act yes sir ma'am i'm sorry slides are not moving make it okay. clear please yes sir sorry now it's moving ma'am please continue uh, i i don't know why this thing is happening sir okay now we can see okay so decision making is the process before that i had showed this slide i didn't this choices will decide success and failure then we come to decision making okay this is a process of choosing a particular course of action from various alternative courses of action as i told you in business this is very very important because the very existence of a business whether a business will make profit or whether a business will make loss right this will depend upon the right decisions so decision making the process which involves the selection of the best course of action from several alternative courses of action okay so importance of decision making is in in business better utilization of resources when we say resources we know business uses a lot of resources okay in uh, we commerce students call it the ms when we say ms it is man which is a human resource money which is a financial resource methods which is the technical resource a uh, materials which is you know the inputs to the business so all these are the resources man machine money methods materials all uh, we call it the ms okay so all these ms need to be utilized properly because all these resources are limited in supply all these resources have alternative ways of being used right so decision making helps us for better utilization of the resources second importance of decision making is that it helps in facing problems and challenges the most important points or times when we have to de- take decisions in is when we are faced with some kind of problem or some kind of challenge that is where the importance of decision making is most important okay third importance of decision making is to facilitate innovation if we don't think new right if we go on doing what we were doing for the past so many years right then there is no important relevance of decision making but then there is no innovation also if we want innovation which is very very important to survive in a business right if you want innovation there has to be decision making similarly also for business growth for achieving objectives for increasing efficiency increasing efficiency again means using your resources in the most proper manner right and uh, to motivate the employees right all this and um, all of us know i think um, every business management management student commerce students knows that decision making is the backbone of business management itself right when we say planning 
organizing leading staffing controlling in all these steps of business management decision making plays a very crucial and a very important role okay so this is the importance of decision making right next we have what is known as the decision making process decision making definitely is a process because uh, Although we do it in a split of like I told you right morning when we wake up, uh, we take so many decisions. We do it in a split of a second because those are easy decisions. Sometimes in businesses we have to take some very tough decisions. So actually, even the easy decisions or the tough decisions goes through a certain process. Okay, it is an eight step process that the decision making goes through, which is the first step is what is known as defining the problem. the first step in the process of decision making is to define or to identify and study the real problem it is said that a problem which is well defined is a problem which is half solved i'm sure all of us have heard this sentence right and if you understand the problem in school we tell our students also right if you understand the problem itself it is half solved so understanding the problem is very very important if the problem is inaccurately defined then all the other steps in the process also will become incorrect so the manager should take sufficient time for defining and identifying the problem proper identification and study of the problem will minimize the chance of wastage of time energy and other resources okay so if it is not properly identified then the result will be wastage of time and energy and the manager will answer the wrong question rather than the core problem so define the problem understand the problem right um put it in um black and white right then only you can start to analyze so understanding the like i told understanding the problem a problem that is well defined is a problem that is half solved so that is step number 1 in the decision making pro uh, process step number 2 in the decision making process is to analyze the problem understanding and defining the problem is one thing analyzing the problem is an entirely different things okay because analyzing the problem involves classifying the problem and gathering information the problem should be classified keeping in view a lot of factors what is the nature of decision is it a routine decision is it a strategic decision right what is the impact of the decision on the other functions what is the futurity of the decision futurity of the decision means if i take a decision today right how much into the future it is going to affect it will affect uh, the company one month one year 10 years some decisions you can't change for a long time so the futurity of the decision is important the periodicity of the decision periodicity of the decision means how often i have to take this decision right and most important is what is known as limiting factor or strategic factor when we analyze a problem we have to analyze the problem using all these things the nature of decision the impact of decision the futurity of decision the periodicity of decision and last and most important the limiting factor or strategic factor okay now what is the meaning of this limiting factor in every business there will be one factor which limits the level of production uh, for example um, i'll tell you an example uh, supposing the company has um, they have money okay they have material but then they don't have the necessary workers to put the material into production there um, the workers or the labor is a limiting factor okay supposing they have sufficient labor they have sufficient uh, machinery but they don't have material then material is a limiting factor okay so there is there is always this limit every you know in everyone's life in every business there is this limiting factor that is going to have a crucial impact on the decision right so analyze the problem that is step number 2 in the decision making process okay step number 3 is developing alternatives developing alternatives means in order to solve this problem in which all ways i can solve plan a plan b 
you know we can develop so many alternatives in which um, it can be through a brainstorming session it can be through meetings with the employees of the organization it can be through meetings of the top management of the organization it can be through various discussions and various um, as i told you brainstorming sessions we are able to develop alternatives to solve the problem these alternatives have well, has to be developed right so the success of the decision making process always depends upon the ability and the quality of the manager to develop the alternatives because in developing the alternative the manager has to use his past experiences personal judgments take the opinions and judgments of experts etc but this step is very very important because um in developing the alternatives if we don't develop the correct alternative then we can't take the correct decision right the correct decision will come from one of these alternatives so alternatives have to to be first of all good alternatives only then we can take good decisions so this stage is very very important the and as i told you um it, this is where you know managers play a very important role sometimes we feel right in some companies why are managers paid so high salaries because um these decision making developing alternatives right taking decisions they do that from their past experiences personal judgments right or which is what they carry with them the money that they are getting is for that experience that they bring with them okay so this is a step 3 developing alternatives right step 4 is evaluating the alternatives when we say evaluating the alternatives all the alternative situations to be, should be evaluated in terms of nature time impact etc each and every alternative solution can have advantages and disadvantages right there will not be any alternative that has only advantages there are no disadvantages so every alternative will have advantages and disadvantages so while evaluating the alternative the solution should have substantial quality acts ability anticipation considerations of risk right all these things the element of risk involved in each alternative the resources available for the implementation all this must be considered while evaluating the alternatives then is the next very important step selecting the best alternative right this is a real a uh, decision making process because what is decision decision is selecting the best alternative from all the available alternatives so selecting the best alternative is the real decision making um, process okay so selection involves making choice the manager has to select the best suitable one which satisfies the organization's objectives the selected alternative should accomplish the predetermined goals so he has to study compare all the merits and shortcomings of each alternative in order to select the best alternative okay and the selected alternative should be right and appropriate one which helps to achieve the goals right the ability to select the best course of action from several possible alternative courses of action is what separates a successful manager from other managers okay so what what differentiates a successful manager from other normal managers what differentiates a manager who earns lakhs of rupees from managers who earn 20000 rupees is his ability to choose the best course of action okay so in order to weigh the consequences of one alternative against the other the risk its intensity economy of efforts timings all this also has to be taken into consideration now when we selected the best alternative it becomes a decision right that is why the next step is what you know it is implementing the decision alternative till now we said develop alternative evaluate alternative select best alternative now we are saying implement not alternative implement decision because we chose that uh, choice making process is done now we are going to implement right implementation means the conversion of decision into action we decided right now we have to put it into action that 
putting into action is what is known as the implementation of the decision so for getting the desired results the decision should be properly implemented at the right time everyone involved in it must know what he must do necessary resources should be allocated responsibilities for specific tasks should be assigned and the main problem the manager will face at this implementation stage is maybe resistance from subordinates because most subordinates don't like change they like to go the way they have been going for years every time we try to implement a new decision there would be raw lots of resistance from subordinates so the manager should overcome those uh, resistances the energy and efforts consumed in the decision making will otherwise go waste okay so in order to make a decision acceptable the manager should make people understand what the decision is he has to involve their participation of workers also in the decision in implementing the decision okay the principle of slow and steady progress should be followed to bring about a change in the behavior of subordinates people will definitely resist but slowly steadily you have to make them understand and you have to implement the decision okay then is evaluate the decision whether the decision has been right or not this evaluation is again very very important why is this important because if a decision is a good one then next time we are faced with similar situation we will know what we should do okay if the decision is a bad one next time we are faced with a similar situation we will know what not to do right so evaluating the decision is very very important right and the last of course is follow up action right follow up action will involve taking feedback information finding out if people are happy with the decision understanding if there are other ways to do the decision so this is the eight steps in the decision making process no matter how big or small a decision is mentally right all of us go through these things we analyze a problem we develop the alternative we evaluate which is the best we select the best alternative and then we implement the decision okay so this is what is known as the decision making process right now before we come to the principles of business decisions i'll just quickly tell types of decisions also because there are various types of decisions okay there are what is known as program decisions and non program decisions program decisions are repetitive and routine in nature they involve simple common and frequently occurring problems okay uh, we don't even think twice if something happens what should i do right in college if one student comes late what should we do that is program because that happens on a daily basis daily one or two persons is coming late right so when such a situation comes we already know what we have to do those kind of decisions are what is known as program decisions so they are made in accordance to certain policies rules or procedures whereas non program decisions are non repetitive in nature and are made in accordance with beliefs attitudes and skills so they involve problems relating to allocation of resources there is no standard procedure for non program so it depends on the skills and attitudes okay such a decision is what is known as the non program decisions right similarly uh we have what are known as major decisions and minor decisions major decisions means decisions that have long range impact right replacement of men by machines right or developing a new product these are all very big decisions because they can change the profitability of the organizations they can set the employees to go into a strike if you want to replace men by machines right so those kinds of decisions that have a long range impact is what is known as major decisions and these kind of major decisions are normally taken by top executives okay minor decisions are those decisions to solve minor problems repair a machine assignment of job they are taken by the middle management right then you have what is known as routine decisions and strategic decisions routine is day to day decisions like they are taken by the low level management strategic uh, strategic decisions are decisions related to policy matters right it requires thorough fact fact finding and analysis and it is generally taken by the 
top management i'm just telling all this to understand that there are various kinds of decisions also okay then you have spontaneous and rational decisions spontaneous means without thinking we take some decisions no those decisions are known as spontaneous decisions so they are quick but the chances of errors are very high rational decisions mean what rational decisions are decisions that are taken after systematic analysis we said about the process right if we go through the entire process evaluate alternatives then take decisions that is what is known as rational decisions okay then um we have what are known as analytical and adaptive decisions analytical decisions are taken when the problem is complex but the output is certain or definite right you have a complex complex problem right there the kind of decision is and the output is certain or def, uh, definite then you have to analyze the situation and take the decision right it is known as analytical decisions whereas adaptive decision is taken when the problem is complex and the output is uncertain okay similarly we have mechanical and judgmental decisions mechanical decision means you have a simple problem output is certain and clear then mechanically we take the decisions that is known as mechanical decisions judgmental decisions are taken when the problem is simple but the output is vague or indefinite okay so these are some various types of um decisions right now we'll come to uh what we said the principles of decision making okay principles of decision making are actually some economic concepts that are applied in decision making okay these economic concepts are what we are calling as principles right there are seven different economic concepts which affect decision making um in businesses okay very important very very important concepts of economics and these are referred to as the principles of decision making okay in that the first concept is the concept of time perspective concept of time perspective means um it deals with the economic concept of long run and short run okay the economic concept of long run and short run have become part of everyday language short run refers to the period which is not sufficient to change all the factors of production that means in short run uh, some factors of production can be changed some factors of production cannot be changed that means we have fixed factors as well as variable factors okay so any increase in production the in this period is possible by increasing the variable factors as fixed factors cannot be increased right but long run means it is a period that is sufficient to vary all factors of production that is in the long run output can be increased by increasing even the scale of inputs the size of the firm anything can be changed so economists right are also concerned with short run and long run effects of decision on revenue as well as cost so the really important problem in decision making is to maintain the right balance between long run and short run considerations okay a decision must be made on the basis of short run considerations but may uh, as time elapses it can have uh long run effects which make it more or less profitable than it first appeared okay so it is important to give due consideration to the time perspective the principle of time perspective may be stated as a decision should take into account both short run and long run effects on revenue and cost and maintain a right balance between long run and short run perspectives okay so this is a concept of time perspective it is from this concept that the concepts of fixed cost and variable cost comes because um variable cost is which can be changed fixed cost is it is because of those factors that cannot be changed so the very important concepts of fixed cost and variable cost comes from the concept of time perspective so that is the first economic principle okay second economic principle a very important principle is what is known as the incremental reasoning 
the concept of incremental reasoning okay the concept of incremental reasoning says that when we take a decision we have to analyze the impact of the decision on the cost and revenues okay for example um supposing we decide to buy a new machinery when we decide to buy a new machinery both cost is changing as well as revenue is changing okay supposing we decide to shut down one plant there also cost is changing revenue is changing that means whenever we take a new new decision the change because of that decision that is very important okay for example i'll tell you once more um supposing we want to buy a new machinery okay their cost is increasing because we are buying new machine okay now because of the new machine revenue also is increasing right when we will like consider the, the the decision as a good decision we'll consider uh, the decision as a good decision if the increase in revenue is more than increase in cost 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 also increasing revenue also increasing right but if revenue is increasing more then we'll say that it is a good decision right similarly supposing we are trying to shut down one plant when we are shutting down one plant what will happen cost will decrease revenue also will decrease right but then we want the cost to decrease more than the decrease in revenue both are decreasing cost also decreasing revenue also decreasing so we want the cost to decrease more than the revenues okay so we according to incremental reasoning we say that a decision is a good one if it increases revenue more than it cost right it decreases cost more than revenues or if it decreases some cost to a greater extent than it increases other cost or it increases some revenues more than it decreases other revenues in this four situation we'll say that the decision is a good decision so here we are considering the concept of incremental reasoning that means see anyway the company is incurring some cost the company is getting some revenue right when i take a decision right what is that impact of decision on the cost and revenues that is important in deciding whether the decision is a good one so that incremental that increase in cost or the change in cost and change in revenue is more important than total cost and total revenue okay that is why we say that it is closely related to marginal cost and marginal revenues right and it involves estimating the impact of a decision on cost and revenues right and we say that a decision is a good one if it increases revenue more than it increases cost it reduces cost more than it reduces revenues right some costs are increasing some costs are decreasing you think okay then the decrease in some cost must be more than increase in other cost okay similarly some revenues are increasing some revenues are decreasing you think then the increase in the revenues should be more than the decrease in the other revenues right in such situations we'll say that it is a good decision so this again is a very important principle of decision making okay third one very interesting one i think many of you must know be knowing this it is known as the discounting principle or time value of money okay time value of money is what you know you must have heard um our parents say or our grandparents say that you know during our time in 100 rupees what all things used to come right we used to buy one month ka one month ka full ration using 100 rupees right today uh, today's generation 100 rupees is not sufficient for buying one burger also right why is this happening this is happening because the value of money is decreasing okay this value of money is decreasing according to time when time passes money value is decreasing right that is what is known as time value of money so time value of money says that the value of money decreases with time because it is decreasing we call it discounting right that is why this principle is known as discounting principle right so discounting principle is based on the concept of time value of money right the concept of time value of money considers that money that is earned at earlier period 
is more valuable than the same amount of money that is earned at a later period right you can't say today is 1 lakh suppose i am going to invest 1 lakh rupees today after 10 years i am going to get 2 lakhs right how should we consider we have to consider whether it is uh, worthwhile or not by considering time value of money we have to discount that money and then compare it with the money we are investing today right uh, because today's money and 10 years later the value of money is not the same the value of money is changing with time it is decreasing with time that is why it is known as discounting principle or it is known as time value of money okay now why are why is time value of money there it is because of three reasons one is uncertainty what is uncertain future itself is uncertain okay so the future is uncertain about the recovery of the money suppose if somebody has to give me uh 5000 rupees i i lent one person 5000 rupees he has to return it to me when when will i want it i will want it as early as possible because tomorrow you don't know whether he'll give or not right whether he'll uh, not meet me at all right so how early we want we we try to get it as early as possible right that is uncertainty future is uncertain we don't know what is going to happen tomorrow so uncertainty is one reason for the discounting principle or time value of money okay second reason for discounting principle is what is known as earning power of money earning power of money means what you know if i get 1 lakh rupees today right or 1 lakh rupees at the end of one year then 1 lakh rupees today is equal to that 1 lakh plus i can put it in an fd if i don't want that money today i can put it in an fd earn 7% uh, interest right then how much that 1 lakh will become it will definitely become more than 1 lakh then why should i get take 1 lakh after one year no right so money has earning power i can invest it in so many places i can invest it in mutual funds i can invest it in share market i can make this 1 lakh rupees to 1 lakh 50 or 2 lakhs rupees by the end of one year how can i say today is 1 lakh and at the end of one year 1 lakh is the same it is not the same the reason is money has earning power okay so because of earning power of money also we say that today's 1 lakh not equal to tomorrow's 1 lakh tomorrow's 1 lakh is definitely less okay third is buying power of money buying power of money means what buying power of money means i want money today because all of us have needs we can think of 101 reasons i have to buy this i have to buy that i should pour petrol i you know we can think of 101 uh, reasons why we need money but because money has buying power so because of these three reasons we have what is known as time value of money or what is known as the discounting principle this again is a very important decision when we are investing money in business right when we when we see the what is going to be the return after 10 years we should not just take it at face value we have to discount the money and then compare it to our today's investment okay so that is about the discounting principle the next one is what is known as opportunity cost concept opportunity cost concept is something that is familiar to all commerce students and commerce teachers i'm sure opportunity cost is based on the concept that resources are scarce right and because resources are scarce we are forced to choose we have to make a decision right so if we choose to have more of one thing it will be necessary to have less of another thing okay for example if the firm wants to produce more of product x then with the same resource the firm will be forced to produce less of product y okay so that is what is um, um, from there comes a the concept of opportunity cost because opportunity cost of a decision is a sacrifice of alternatives required by that decision i'll give you an example again right supposing uh, i'm running a business i have my own building okay i have two choices i can run my business in my own building right but if i don't run my business in my own building i can give the building for rent i can and i can get 10000 rupees monthly rent right but by running the business i'm losing the rent 
right so that is what is known as opportunity cost so we can give lots of example opportunity cost of funds that we invest in our business is the amount of interest you could have got if you would have put it in a bank right the opportunity cost of using an idle machine is of course zero okay so um opportunity cost means when you have more than opportunity cost represents the benefit or the revenue that is sacrificed by pursuing one course of action rather than another course of action okay so opportunity cost represents the benefit or revenue foregone by pursuing one course of action rather than another course of action that is what is um opportunity cost principle right the next principle is what is known as equi marginal principle equi marginal principle is also known as principle of maximum satisfaction okay according to equi marginal principle an input should be allocated in such a way that the value added by the last unit is the same in all cases that is if a person has something that he can put to several users he should distribute it among these users in such a way that it has the same marginal utility in all cases um i'll give you an example which i normally give to students okay supposing suddenly exam is announced okay only 15 days time is there five subjects are there okay if you are going to distribute equally we will give 3 days to each subject no 15 days five subjects means we'll give 3 days to each subject that is equal distribution okay when we do equal distribution you know what is the problem for tough subjects we don't have sufficient time and for easy subjects supposing english is one subject 3 days is not necessary right they'll be wasting time equi marginal principle means what equi marginal principle says that you have to allocate the resource in such a way that the value added by the last unit is same in all cases right that means for tough subject i should give more days and for easy subject i should give less days so all the days are utilized properly right okay that kind of allocation is what is known as equi marginal allocation this again is a very important concept by taking decisions okay the next is the contribution concept contribution concept tells about the amount contributed towards overheads and profits okay it helps in determining the best product mix where allocation of scarce resources is involved right contribution comes from sales minus variable cost is contribution right so that contribution is what contributes towards meeting the fixed expenses of of the firm okay so it tells us if it is advantageous to accept a fresh order to introduce a new product to shut down or continue with the plan right in all this what we have to consider is what is the contribution of that product right what is the contribution of that plant right that contribution concept has to be taken into consideration so unit contribution is the incremental revenue per unit minus the incremental cost per unit the incremental revenue per unit minus the incremental cost per unit is what is known as contribution so whenever we are trying to take a decision right accept a new order introduce a new product shut down a plant right in all this we should take the contribution concept into consideration okay and the last i think i'm running out of time also the last concept is the concept of risk and uncertainty okay we already said future is uncertain right there is always an element of risk and uncertainty but the problem you know we use this word risk and uncertainty interchangeably but there is a clear cut difference between risk and uncertainty uncertainty means what you know uncertainty means we don't know what is going to happen in the future okay we don't have any idea of what is going to happen in the future that is known as uncertainty but risk means what we know risk is we know with um we know the probability of occurrence of events that is there is a 50% chance that we'll make profit over 10 lakhs right 30% chance that it might be only 8 lakhs 
right? Twenty percent chance that it might be five lakhs, right? So we are able to assign. We know the various outcomes, and we know the probability of occurrence of the various outcomes. Okay, when we are able to assign probabilities to the occurrence of outcomes, then that is known as risk. right when we don't even know what is going to happen right that is known as uncertainty okay so risk and uncertainty there are so many things actions and reactions of competitors shifting consumer choices right we make a product suddenly consumers don't want they suddenly shifted their choice right or some competitor came up with some better product then people will all shift to that product these kind of things will definitely happen in businesses right but we have to I have an idea about this also right unexpected environmental changes changes in government policies right all this also must be accounted for while taking decisions okay so these are about the uh, principles of business decisions okay so this i am once again i am really thankful for the opportunity that has been given to me and um, i hope i have been able to do justice to this session Thank you so much, madam, for the Thank wonderful you, presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, now we have time for discussion. Uh, yes, sir. Definitely. Now I request the participants, if you have any query or would like to share something, please come ahead, dear participants. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Uh, it was very wonderful and very informative lecture from your side. Thank you, sir. And, uh, Thank you so much. This is a. Uh, uh, Not exclusively for management, for everybody. It's in a common topic, very important, pertinent decision yeah. making. Yes. Uh, <laughs> though you are from commerce department, but still, it is a uh, topic for all people. My question yeah. is that the, yes, can, can we can we uh, take parallel planning and decision making because they resemble almost sound same, you know, planning and decision making. What could be the major difference between planning and decision making? Uh, so uh, I was telling in the beginning, right? Uh, in every step of business management, business management, there are many steps. No planning, organizing, staffing, leading, controlling. Okay, decision making is a part and parcel of each step. In planning, also there is decision making. In organizing, also there is decision making. Okay, decision making is the um, bottom line of every activity which a, a management does. Okay, so planning is just one among them. In planning, in planning, there is decision making, right? So I think I would call it that decision making is a subset. I mean, uh, of all these activities, right? Um, when we say planning, right? Uh, in planning, you are definitely developing the plans, right? Um, it is the part of developing the alternatives. But decision making is not just in planning. Decision making is something that comes everywhere. Decision making is it comes in organizing also. It comes in staffing also, right? When we think about the managerial steps in staffing, uh, you know, which which all vacancies we have to announce, who we have to choose, right? It comes yes, in that. You 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 are not you are not doing decision making, ma'am. It is you are making a planning. Then when you use the word W W or W who what where, yes so, sir. No, no, w is very using where what why all the this pertains to planning, and nowhere in the manual book is it's not a pervasive function. Decision making not exists in but planning exists in all levels and all it exists in all the levels of management. Whereas decision making decision making. No, sir. Decision making also exists. In, there are decisions which lower level management takes. There are decisions that top management takes. Okay, that is what we call as routine decisions. Think, no, no. My my argument is that to make a decision, you need to think. You need to plan. That planning is you know superseding the decision making. What I perceive, or maybe I am saying you are not wrong, but planning is always at upper side. It is a. It is you know that's what it's called. It's a primary function of the management. My my question is how you distinguish between planning and decision making. And planning, you never find any alternatives. You have to only future course of action. Whereas in decision making, you have different steps. In planning, also you have steps. The only thing that decision making has to be done with great deal of planning. Decision making has to be done with great deal of planning. Otherwise, your decision might go wrong because if you don't question yourself, what I'm doing is is is, is legitimate or not. When you is it right yes. to put it into action or not? When you said uh, all Ws, that means planning is uh, you know 
superseding the decision making so decision making is subject of the planning yeah that's why the decision making is there in every every step of management activity i do agree but planning planning is the primary function than decision making decision making is not a superseding function it is subsidiary to the planning sub sub yeah sub say that way it's a subset of all management activities is what i said oh thank you so much thank you so much hiraman sir uh, you have raised your hand uh, sorry vinayak sir please hello madam vinayak sir yes ah. please good evening sir audible? yes sir yeah, madam yes 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 <coughs> today i have learned types of decisions before this yes sir. before this i know only some types of decision at yes. the early, at the early ages we do not know how to take the decision but after your lecture i understand there are so many types of decisions and this is how to take the decisions decision to be take wrong or correct but we have to take the decision uh, surely yes sir definitely as i told you like every day from the moment we wake up we are always taking decisions okay yes. I, 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 in the beginning i said morning we take atta should i make chapati or should i make puri that also is a decision right i go to my cupboard which dress i should wear is a decision these are routine decisions okay there are big decisions there are small decisions there are decisions we take on daily basis there are strategic decisions so only thing uh, impact will differ depending upon the decisions and may that's what i said major decisions minor decisions routine decisions strategic decisions long term decisions short term you know there's so many types right from very small decisions to very big decisions that can impact the profitability of an organization you know some wrong decisions can lead to even shutdown of the firm right so yes. those kind of very big decisions are there so, uh, so many so many great yes. persons cannot take the decision so that they get failed so that yes. they have to take the decision that decision should be sometimes uh, right i think sometimes uh, the reason why these great persons fail is maybe because i mean i'm just saying maybe because they don't consider the alternatives or they're not taking rational decisions rational decision means thinking of what all is possible and choosing the best alternative right when we take uh, spontaneous decisions that is where it normally goes wrong right if we take rational decisions by considering all alternative the impact of what alternatives then normally we end up taking good decisions i have never understand or never imagine this like this types of uh, that types of decisions there are types you have explained thank you sir thank you so much thank you madam decision making arise when you have an alternative otherwise you know when you go to hotel if you do not have uh, any alternative like puri dosa <laughs> vada all these thing then you have to go for it that's called uh, no, option choice no sir there you, no no there you have the alternative of shifting to another hotel <laughs> provided you have hotels nearby otherwise you are yes. traveling in yeah. bengal of course if you are of course if you are, if you are in the middle of so yeah of course if you are in the middle of a desert oh. you know if there is no nothing else then uh, you have to live with what is there there is right. no question of decision only to go for what is available yeah that is matter of life and death there the decision is whether you want to live or die <laughs> exactly yes so thank you thank you dr badiuddin sir vinayak thakur sir for your nice queries and also sharing your views now i request the chief organizer of the series our ideal principal mm betkar sir to conclude the session you are welcome sir
Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your kind words. Thank you, sir. Now I move towards the vote of thanks. As we know, Sri Kumar Swami Mahavidyalaya Ausa District Latur is organized a world record series two. Today we have completed 337th day of the series. And the topic for today's presentation was the principle principles of business decisions. Now this topic have very well presented by Honorable Tita Thomas Madam, where Madam have clear the term decision making. And as well as what is the decision itself, importance of decisions making in business and the decision making process and different steps regarding the process. Then major decisions, minor decisions, some new decisions like analyticals, spontaneous, adaptive decisions, and the concept of time perspectives. And all those points have covered in your lecture, Madam, so clearly the it was perfect. And the way you expressed it was the excellent one. Really, we are very, very happy to mention you in the session. So thank you so much on behalf of the organizing committee members. Thank you. We accepted our invitation and likely to be joined to the series as a resource person. So once again, very, very thankful to you, madam. Then I thank the chief organizer of the series, Principal M. Betkar, sir. Also thanks faculties of my college and special thanks to Dr. Badiuddin, sir, Vinayak Tathur, sir. And I realize thanks to Hiraman sir, Sonu Kumar sir, Sheshrao Dhandge sir uh, for your active participants in the series. And also thanks all those dear participants who join the series regularly, encourages us and helps to enhance the beauty of the series. So thanks to you all once again. Now I request, please fill the feedback link which is given in the chat box. Then you will get your certificates. So with the kind permission of the chief organizer, I declare the session is over. Thank you so much, Tita Madam. Once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir.